I guess you would call me an investor since then. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy to watch, but you know these these patterns are starting to repeat themselves, and the uh, the big players and and people are starting to shake everybody out of the market, and we're watching that. And don't be scared. You know there are suppressed assets. There's things out there that you know it, it's pretty cool to be able to have access to now because they're slowly getting taken away from us. So we're going to kind of get into one that Josh and I have been looking at and talking about, and one that really has a lot of potential to be something huge. Um, Josh, can you go to swift.com? Um, I'm sure you guys have heard Alex talk about this. I'm sure people have talked about this on multiple calls. Does everybody kind of understand what Swift is? Josh, you know, have you guys talked to uh, about Swift payments and what the Swift market is? We have, but um, I think a good refresher is always good. And um, we do have some newer people. So just explaining it um, a little bit in detail, a little bit of brief overview might help people understand the magnitude of the information you're going to give them. Sure. So I, again, I, I got some good exposure to this young. Uh, my dad's always been an international businessman. Um, I've talked to him a lot about this over the past couple of years, like about SWIFT and international payments. Um, SWIFT is a giant bank and they basically mediate payments between uh, cross-border payments. You know, stuff that we deal in and when we're trading currency pairs, they're doing the transactions. They actually have codes whenever they, uh, whenever, I guess whenever money is sent, it's not actually exchange as money, it's exchange as a code. And that's what SWIFT does. It's very expensive and they're upgrading their software. So if you go, Josh, to standards um, right there, we're going to look at that. <clears throat> so Josh, if you want to go ahead and just read through that real quick. All right. So SWIFT standards, enabling efficient communication for the financial world. So SWIFT standards works with the user community to specify and publish market practice rules and best practice advice on how standards should be deployed to meet particular business needs or to comply with regulation. The SWIFT standards group maintains several important message standards. The SWIFT MT standard, for instance, is used for international payments, cash management, trade finance, and treasury business. Working with the SWIFT community, SWIFT standards operates the annual maintenance process for MT, which ensures that the standard evolves to meet changing market needs. SWIFT standards under contract to ISO also maintains two open messaging standards, ISO 15022, which is used for security settlement and asset servicing, and ISO 20022, which is scoped to all financial industry processes. Okay, so that's SWIFT basically making their announcement. They're moving to this thing, ISO 222. So kind of what is that? And Josh, if you want to just jump on Google real quick and, and type in ISO 222 compliant crypto. Is there a certain thing you're looking for? Uh, that first one, it should be Pemex would be the website. Go up. Yeah, that one's fine. So you can just go through and there, there's some official documentation. I, I'll get some better information so people can actually see it. Um, I really like it, like looking at swift.com, looking at government organization web pages, and they're talking about it. It's not just an article from somebody with an opinion. Um, and, and I do have that information. So again, I'll get that over to people. Um, but basically you can go and it's pretty public knowledge to go look at what ISO 222 compliant crypto is and, and what tokens are compliant. Um, and again, XRP is one that is compliant. Um, basically, you have SWIFT saying, this is what we're going to, and then you can go directly and look at the standards and look at what cryptocurrencies are compliant with that standard. And uh, when you're, you're able to see that, it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, and so like right here, for example, guys, it says, what purpose do ISO standards serve? Through its standards, ISO aims to promote international trade and protect end users by ensuring the products being made are safe 
and of acceptable quality. Basically, guys, we're, we've been waiting for a very long time. A very long time if you've been in crypto for a while, short time, it feels like forever. We're waiting on our government to give us regulation. These tokens right here are what's going to be what they're regulating on. This is the new ecosystem. This is what they're going to make their rules and regulations around. The globe's adopting it. We're just basically watching our country act like we're not adopting it. Um, I don't know, Josh, have you talked to them at X, about XRP and the lawsuit at all? Um, not too much. I mean, everybody kind of knows that there's a lawsuit. Um, sure. If you want to get into it, by all means. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. And again, I'll have to... I, I like to provide documentation when I do this. So it's not just some guy saying something, but there's real world documentation and a paper trail. So you can say, this is real information. This is not a rug pull. This is not something, this is, this is the real infrastructure and the government is implementing it. And, you know, it, it, there is an ability to show that, but basically the government has sued XRP and said it could possibly be a security and they have been working with XRP the entire time. Ripple Labs, they've been working with them um, in the development of central bank digital currencies. That is, is what cryptocurrencies are going to lead to. Every central bank in the world, every asset on the planet will be tokenized and will be on the blockchain. It will be all more efficient and better. Um, and that's kind of what we're moving to. But we need that regulation. You know, the United States is kind of the the driver of the world where the, you know, our economy is is what it is. Um, and once we make that final decision and we get regulatory clarity, the market will get mass adoption. We'll get huge money coming in from institutional investors. And, it, you know, we will see it unfold like we know it's going to. Doesn't feel like it right now, but it will happen. Um, XRP is in my opinion, has the ability to kind of handle this whole new ecosystem just the way it is, um, the way it operates. Mm. Josh, did you get uh, to see that Fedwire fund services? Basically, our, our internal bank-to-bank uh, -bank in the United States has also announced that they're moving to this ISO standard. So that means when Bank of America sends money to Wells Fargo, there's internal transfers in our country they're going to be using this exact same tokenized technology to do the transfers. So this is the big banks, the big governments, they're announcing to us, hey, this, this stuff is going to be implemented. This is what we're doing. Yeah, so that pulled like, it there up. we go, Josh. And it, it kind of, it, it even gives you timelines, right? Um, the more you look into it. And so the, it's it's getting really interesting now. And Josh and I have been talking a lot about this on the side, um, you know, Coinbase, one of our largest exchanges, you know, the one we thought is the good guy, the one that's not the FTX, the one that's that's doing things right, that's got our back. They're now removing XRP, XLM, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and ETH Classic. Josh, if you want to pull up an article about that, or you know, people can look that up. Um, but it's very interesting that Coinbase is not now allowing uh, or supporting those assets. And so we're kind of, you know, coming to a point where there's very few places in our country, in the United States at least, where you can buy them and, and exchanges that you can buy them on. And so, you know, again, Josh and I will do some stuff later on for you guys to, uh, to show you how to actually go in and buy XRP, XLM, and, and how to transfer it and how to get it ultimately onto a ledger. Right. Everybody's been watching people get picked off, you know, the FTX collapse, all these different collapses. Um, these exchanges, even if they seem legit, we need to have our keys and, and our crypto on uh, a hard wallet. So, guys, remember to order something, have some ability to have a hard wallet if you can. I think it's really important. Um, Josh, are you able to do a chart comparison of Bitcoin USD and XRP USD? Um, I'm not skilled. Like, you mean like kind of like overlay them side by side or yeah, if not, I mean, it's something I really would like to show just yeah, all these it, really volatile moves in the market from Bitcoin, ETH and, and some of our big players and 
how much XRP is really acting in these times of, of volatility like a stable coin. I mean, if not, I'm sure David could. He's in here. Okay. Click, click the plus sign next to BTC USD. Uh, where? Here? Oh. Oh, XRP. Yeah, and then you just, yeah, you just add the chart What's that you wanted to overlay use? onto. What was that? I think I had, which one did I have over here? Hold on. I think this one was trash, right? Oh, no, this is good. The bit stamp one, well, I had the B. Boom. Okay, there's Bitcoin. Does that work? Hello? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, traders. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's been interesting to watch. Uh, oh, my goodness, here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's remained a lot more stable in a lot of times of, of mass volatility, especially if you can go back and look at the past. And, you know, even that big drop um, we had a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago with Bitcoin, it it, it really stayed and it, it's been acting a little more like stable coin. And it's kind of making more uh, use case that it's, it's a money that can be used for global transfer because it doesn't have these big swings in price. So. You know, it's not you're not going to buy it and then it's going to lose its value and then you can't do your transaction. And ultimately, XRP is is settled. You know, it's it's a settlement token. It's going to be used for cross border payments. It will be the intermediary between the USD and the JPY. Yeah, I mean, and so I would just say this, guys, um, kind of an interesting thing that. I just kind of seen on this Fed Reserve thing. Um, let's go to this Fedwire funds sheet. So ISO migrations from November 21st, so that is literally like two weeks ago, to March 2023. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, they talked about how the interest rates um, may be in a good place to kind of just let them chill for a little bit. So a lot of people believe that all these, uh, you know, your equities, uh, commodities, Anything against the dollar, they pretty much think that, you know, that can give us some liquidity moving into the market. And kind of this next three to six months is really where I'm just watching to kind of see how the markets move, if they move at all, if they don't really move, and we don't hit another bottom, you know, in the market as far as the crypto side. This type of news where all this, this compliance and regulation can kind of pop up in the end of quarter one, 2023, uh, I mean, that's just really good signs for crypto in general. And then 2024, we know that we have the um, the halving. We'll be really in close vicinity of the next halving. So or is it 24 or 25? Um, I believe the I believe the halving will be December of 2024. Um, yeah. And then following the halving, what is it? I, I believe it's seven months until all time highs from the having. Yeah. It's uh, like again, I'll have to go back. I, I have it all written down. Life's a little crazy. So I don't have everything at my disposal right now, but it, yeah, it, it's something to that tune. I believe it's the end of 24 is the having, and then we'll have the, you know, bull run afterwards. Well, they say they can last about 365 days almost. So with this whole just regulation next year, we could kind of see us just, a gradual climb all next year, or maybe just kind of little five, you know, three to 5% moves up. But when that having comes, if the market's like in any bit of kind of a regulated side-by-side -side state, it's going to probably get super bullish. And just yeah, kind of and, the information that Andy's sharing with us is just, you know, and this is another way that I look at, at this particular asset and a few others. Um, and this is just my belief, what I've kind of come to as an opinion. But th this is one of the ones that I don't look at in the denomination of U.S. dollars. I don't really care other than I want it as cheap as possible so I can buy as much as possible. Um, I don't care what that price is now, because at one point, Bitcoin was also very inexpensive, you know. 
And, and I believe, again, XRP is a suppressed asset. You have every major central bank that we're allies with right now, Japan, the Bank of Japan, and the Bank of England are doing their CBDC pilot program with Ripple Labs, who owns XRP. Um, you know, and those are our two biggest financial partners. Again, we trade the London market and we trade the Asian market. That's that's our big allies banking wise, and that is what's going on. Um, they are implementing this ISO standard, and this is going to change global banking, global business, and make it cheaper and more efficient for everyone. So, you know, again, this is writing on the wall. I, I believe it's suppressed information because it's hard to find. You know, it's unsure. There's a lawsuit against it. And again, this is all speculative investing. But if you look at who's working with this company in particular, the banks and the countries that are using their technology and their products, it will, it, it kind of gives you some peace of mind. It doesn't feel like you're just throwing money in, in, into the wind. And a lot of us feel like that right now. You know, you dollar cost average and then you have a 20% reduction in the market. And now you're going, oh, damn, I don't have my money. <laughs> you know, I just lost a bunch of money. And so it's, you know, it's a very scary place to be in, but this is something I believe in the future is going to be, it, it could be it. It, it could be, you know, a, a very big play and a very big move if it if it takes off like it's supposed to, if it's no longer suppressed. And everybody in the world, every business, every bank, they're moving to this technology. So, you know, it's it's a matter of time of, of when the price will shoot up. I believe it, it will continue to go up. I think this is a very strong, very stable investment, you know? Yeah, and a big part of this, like, it's cool, like, for this, for example, right here, a big part of crypto in general, and you actually see it more in other countries now rather than uh, the United States, is the education aspect. Crypto is not going to just be something Andy and I have talked about is crypto two, three, four, five years from now is not going to be like it is now where you got to get on a call and someone's got to show you how to send crypto from a private wallet, from an exchange. Like, no, it's going to be an interface that you don't even really know that you're using crypto. It's just going to be a digital asset that you're just transferring around and you're not going to really know what the underlying technology is. It's kind of like when we, I talked about a few months back where you send money on cash app and you have no idea how you're sending the money. You just know that it goes from point A to point B, you send a wire transfer, you have no idea what traditional finance or um, system that that's using. You just know that you can trust that the money's going to get there. If not, you can hold the bank accountable. So these, like it says right here, federal banks plan to kick the ISO uh, 222 education program in Q4. There's going to be an experimentation, an education, and then an implementation phase. And that's probably what 2023, you know, 2024, a little bit, that's going to be that phase. They got to get this right before they roll it out. They can't just push out this product and have it all screwed up, have nobody know how to read and find transactions on the blockchain. They got to have an interface that makes it user friendly for everybody else. So if the more we're kind of really looking for is stuff like this, where we see pilot programs, education opportunities, education seminars, um, Bitcoin, you know, they have that convention in uh, Miami every year in New York. So you want to just, the more you see those type of things roll out, uh, that's going to be very good news for not all of crypto, but mainly the top projects like your XRPs, your XLMs, your Bitcoins, Ethereum, things like that. The safe projects, not the risky projects. The risky projects will probably die off because regulation will get involved. Right. Those guys won't be able to hang if they don't have liquidity coming into their projects because they can't be regulated. They're going to die. They're not going to have revenues to keep their projects going. So absolutely. Yeah. So and this and is Josh, really cool. this is, you know, one thing, guys, again, this is all history. Right. And if you go back, um, our most recent historical event that's similar to this is the dot com crash and the dot com boom. Right. You had this new emerging technology everybody said it was going to be amazing everybody said it was going to be junk it was going to be nothing right you had all kinds of unknowns there was all types of venture capital and then whenever basically 
the market crashed because everybody realized most of the companies were not real. They were not legitimate. They were propped up by venture capital and investor money. And, you know, the ones that stayed, the Googles, the Amazons, those, those are the biggest players in the world. And again, this will happen in this space. There's 20,000 some odd crypto. A lot of them will go away, but the ones that stick around will, will change the world. They will be the Yahoo, the Google, the Amazon. They will be world-changing technologies, and that's what you're buying into. You know, this stuff was not made for us. We were not supposed to have access to this stuff. This stuff right here is, is for the banks, and we have, you know, we're fortunate to be able to have access and see certain things like XRP and, and Ripple and XLM and Bitcoin at prices where they're tangible for regular people. And at a certain point, when those ones that the market shakes out and the ones that survive, th those assets will be worth so much. They will be worth more than just the cash value. You can use them as, you know, lending tools. You can, you can, you know, I think in the future, you'll be able to loan those things out and people will be able to use your money and you will essentially be able to be a bank of some sort. Um, and, and again, you know, we have access to these things. I, I don't like looking at them in us dollar value because i don't think that makes sense i think there's still another you know good amount of time before this stuff really gets implemented and it's going to be invaluable if you own the right things in the future so you know just don't get discouraged even if you buy in and you dollar cost average and you start losing some value you know look at the value you have in what is this technology what problem is it fixing you know and, and here the things we've kind of showed tonight, they're they're showing a use case and that, you know, SWIFT, that the Fedwire, that the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, you know, maybe even our government are working with this company directly in order to create CBDCs in a, a new digital ecosystem. So just kind of see what that is and, and take it for what it is. Um, don't necessarily look at the U.S. dollar price and say, oh, this is only 38 cents, 39 cents right now. You know, it's no Bitcoin. Maybe not. It, it's designed for something different. But, you know, again, Josh and I really believe in this and in the future of this. And I, I, the more information we get, y'all, hopefully you can see what it is as well um, and, and what we believe it could be. Um, this is kind of cool. If you guys go on Stellar's website, this is just like a project, for example. They talk about, you know, Stellar makes it possible to create, send, and trade representations of all forms of money, dollars, pesos, Bitcoin, pretty much anything. And then right here, you guys can see a little template of how Stellar could work where you have, you know, everybody knows that the Nayara, at least people in OBG know at the dollar, the peso. So all it is, is just an efficient way to transfer money from one person to the other. So a key word Andy said when he was talking about SWIFT was cross-border payment or cross um, well, yeah, cross-border payment. So we don't have to have that time delay or potentially have our transaction lost from it being sent from one financial system to the other. We have something like Stellar to fall back on. So that's why the implementation of uh, having a set standard that these uh, financial institutions follow is important so that they can basically execute it right and people can trust into what this technology is. And here's the thing, this is food for thought. Um, we, for those of you who don't know, FTX was an exchange. Think of it as like a crypto bank. There was about nine, ten billion dollars worth of customer client funds in their their exchange and on their balance sheet, saying, "Hey, we have this much amount of money." Turns out they didn't have the money. You know, they lended it all out. Um, they reinvested it. They spent it on whatever. And turns out, corrupt people got involved with that crypto bank. Right? They. They claim they're pro crypto. They claim they're decentralized, decentralized entity, or they want to act like one, but they acted just like any bank would. So, the big thing with these crypto exchanges is are they're not government ran. It is, it's it's like basically a capitalistic business. So, what's to say two, three, four years from now, we don't have access to all these exchanges? And I think what Andy's kind of driving at with, when we look at this article right here, you know, Coinbase to Coinbase to delist XRP, Bitcoin Cash, ETH, XLM. What if the government just doesn't want institutions, or they only want certain institutions to have access to exchange these coins for customers and clientele? 
that's part of regulation, you know? So if it, if they deem XRP as a security or whatever, which I don't remember if they're not, I don't think they are, but let's say some of these become securities or some of these become, you know, certain classes of assets, then probably only certain people will be able to deal them. So um, right now you can just go about, like you go to Stellar right here, you can go to this exchange tab down here and you can see, you can get it on Bit4X. They're going to delist it in January, Digifinex, Mexi Global, Bitstamp. But let's um, say three of the, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll actually ask you whenever we're done. Go ahead. But yeah, so just remember guys, like right now it's kind of, everything's low key, even though in a lot of people don't want to get involved with crypto right now, but it's very low key and there's not really a barrier to get these things. So there might be a barrier in the future. That's kind of what Andy's getting at is just guys, again, when we're investing in this stuff, you have to detach yourself from the dollar value amount that you're looking at this perceived value that we have when, when, you know, fidelity creates in a way for the average Joe to invest in Bitcoin. Do you think Bitcoin sticking around with fidelity? Come on guys. They're laying this stuff out. This, this information is here and they're scaring people out of this they're frightening people because yeah you might invest in it and your u.s dollars becomes less because you're riding the wave but this some of this stuff and and again you know xrp and xlm are two huge ones to look at um don't look at them in the dollar value look at the potential and who is currently working with them not rumors not possibilities but real full-fledged contracts, real abilities to invest in and use this technology, they they're laying it out. And you know, you need to use that and use that discernment to be able to, to invest and kind of ride this wave. The next two years are going to be a little rocky. You know, this you know, recession's not done. There's other things that are going on globally. This is not over. And, and so you guys have to just, you know, really look at. You know, these assets are being suppressed. It might be hard to get them in the future. And, you know, even if you buy them and they drop by 20%, you know what you're buying for the future, you know, with, with these particular ones and what they are. Um, again, Josh and I will provide some more information over time um, just so it makes sense. You know, it sounds like a lot. And, and there is a lot to this one in particular. But, you know, they're they're laying out the framework that they're going to use globally and we'll see regulation that follows that. Paul asked, what do you think it would be as far as a good amount to have goal wise for XRP? You know, I think that's different for every person. Um, you know, I, I have beliefs that long-term it will be, a really, really valuable thing. You know, you start doing it at some of the numbers. What if this handled all the money in SWIFT? And what does that look like? You know, th there are certain calculations you can do to guesstimate the number. So, to, you know, it all depends. Um, but long term, I think XRP will be over $1,000. So you do the math. You look at what, what that could be, you know, in the next five to seven years and what that could mean for you. Again, this is risky. This is, you know, we're kind of on the forefront of this stuff. And this is this is not, you know, for sure. You know, you can have an FTX, you can have a Celsius or, you know, uh, Terra Luna, whatever uh, happens. To you. So, you know, you have to, again, not over leverage, be smart. But again, look at what, these articles, these government documents are telling you, hey, we're working with this. These banks are saying, hey, we're working with this company. You know, and, and then make your make your investment decision based on that. Um, you know, I'm not going to disclose how much I have, but I have a good amount. Um, and I feel really safe with it also. You know, in this time of uncertainty, Josh was saying, you know, he's moving money back into Bitcoin and back into ETH and out of some of these altcoins. Well, you know, I, I feel really comfortable and safe moving money into XRP right now. You know, it, it's it's remained stable. So, again, the amount, it's, it's really hard to say. Um, you know, you can go watch all the YouTube crazies and some people are saying it'll be $500,000 a piece. And 
it, you have all these numbers, but nobody has any real knowledge uh, of what any of these things mean. So I, I can't make that determination. But I, what I do know is the technology is there. The companies that need the technology are working with the company that made the technology. You know, they're kind of laying it out for us. You know, the government's working with it. The, you know, Swift Bank, the largest, you know, remittance bank in the world is is working with them. All I'll say is make, make your informed decision. Go look at these articles and, you know, Josh and I are going to send you some stuff and and so you can see with your own eyes, like this is real information, real contracts, not hearsay, not Dogecoin might be used on Twitter. You know, you got people dumping their life savings into something and and it's 100 percent speculative and a lot of money we've we've made is speculative. But this right here, they're really laying out. The information for us and, and showing us, um, I highly advise you guys to take the 10 or 15 top coins on on the exchanges and go click through them and learn a little bit about them. Um, you know, and see how different they are and, and you know, what they could be. And, and that will kind of give you a good idea of where XRP falls into the ecosystem. It's a, it's a you know, each one of these kind of has a different place. They're software. And XRP is going to be one piece to the large puzzle. It's not only going to be one, you know, there'll be multiple. It's going to be an ecosystem. But XRP will definitely be um, a, a big player as well as XLM. Um, does anybody have any questions? Cardano Solana. I like Cardano. I like both of those. Um, Solana, I just think is going to be the most, I, I mean, you, we've already seen them go from 36 down to $13, but I think they're going to remain volatile until the market can actually stabilize and start to work its way up. Overall, Cardano, though, hasn't... I mean, it's not moving crazy. Just a slow death fall. Like but everything I mean, right now. A few years back, like when... I, I think when I first bought Cardano, it was like $0.08. Cents. So, I mean, even from there, it's still... 400 300 to 400 percent above that price so that's the other food for thought guys is as bad as you know the market feels right now two and a half years ago or even two years ago this was prices still higher than those prices so just try to remain optimistic that the news like andy's sharing and the stuff we see on a day-to-day -day basis on instagram um, you know, the stuff you see on the chat and OBG, like these are way more like if this news would have came out two years ago before a big run, I don't know what price would have happened to prices. But the, the, the real fact is, is that the technology itself, crypto is just not capable of doing what everyone wants it to do yet. So, like I said, for the most part, it's just about educating people about what the technology can do implementing the technology and so it can do what they want it to do and then from there investors regulators will see that this is something of value boom price explosion mm -hmm. so we're just, yeah, well, we just go ahead i was just gonna you know once once we get that thing we're waiting on guys everybody's waiting on one thing the united states of america to regulate crypto that's it that's what we're waiting on. And when whatever event triggers that regulation, whatever happens, that is when we're going to get this large flood of money into the space. The money's on the sidelines and, and people are waiting. Um, and, you know, we just are trying to be the lucky ones that are buying the right assets that are going to be the ones that have money pumped into them. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, kind of, you know, you can dollar cost average, be smart, be safe, but. Again, there I believe there's going to be regulation and and there's going to be a, a little blip in the market when that happens. You know, there's going to be a shakeup. There's going to be a lot of scare and fear, and and then the market's going to stabilize and it's going to be something. So, you know, I would highly advise everybody do some studying of history. Go look at the dot com boom and kind of 
how that whole thing played out. And it's it's so identical to cryptocurrency and, and the run of crypto and then the fall of crypto and then the rebuilding and then ultimately what will be in the future. Um, I really highly advise you look at that just so you have something, you know, historically accurate, you know, or, or historical that you can look at that's a similar event. Um, and just so you, you know, I, I know a lot of people are getting scared out of the space and they don't know what to do. They're completely pulling out of crypto or, you know, they've got coins that they think are completely worthless now. And it's like, you know, they weren't feeling that way two years ago <laughs> and, and they were holding for life, you know, and they were, they really believed in the project. And and now they're, you know, boo-hooing and, and it's just the growing pains of this new emerging industry. So, you know, just again, try and not look at these things as, as U S dollars or whatever country you guys, you know, I know some people on this team are not from the U S you know, don't look at it in your denomination, look at, you know, what it could be in the future. It's got more value than just a dollar bill. Um, Josh, you got anything else, bud? Um, one thing I would say too, about these guys is, so there's one way to make Money is obviously invest and you get price appreciate appreciation in the asset, but I'm not too familiar. Do you know if XRP and XLM, like, can you get yield from staking for as part of the network? Yeah. And, and also, so there's some interesting stuff going on with XRP and XRPL and I can get more into that, but XRPL is, is the ledger technology, the actual yeah. back end, if you will, of Ripple, uh, of X XRP. But they're doing like a test net. Uh, do you know what Flare is? The Flare network? I've heard of it. Okay, Not so th they're all operating on the XRPL, the, the ledger for Ripple. Um, and basically what they're doing is Ripple holders, original Ripple holders, they're actually airdropping their tokens to. Um, and as they start doing these, these beta tests and these new programs, if you own XRP, they're going to pick dates of you've owned XRP since this date. So you're, you qualify for this and they're actually airdropping um, tokens uh, of new projects to XRP holders. And again, this is a lot of suppressed information because XRP itself is really hard to get as is. Um, I don't know as far as like, are you, are you talking about like yield farming type of stuff or, or staking? Yeah. Staking more so. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to look into that. And, and you know, again, XRP and, and Ripple Labs, it, there's so much information there. Uh, there's an entire NFT marketplace and ecosystem. There's a whole ledger system. I mean, there's there's multiple layers to this company. And uh, I, I really see some big things for it. So I personally like... Um with your whole, with Swift and everything. I like Chainlink, yeah. uh, mainly because they're gonna be implementing staking. And then basically Chainlink, I mean, you know what Chainlink is, it's just gonna provide, um, help provide that off-chain data um, and bring it online onto the blockchain. So basically that you can have traditional finance, like banks, uh, maybe that aren't as ru rushed to implement all this technology so they can get their off-chain data and bring it on chain and by utilizing chain links um protocol and that and mainly that's it is so it's just going to be that that link like it says chain link and then you can stake your coins um once they open up the staking you'll be able to stake and earn yield so i do believe if um all of this kind of goes through the way andy's discussing i think chain link will provide great value um, because one, I, you know, I, I do see a lot of price appreciation from it. Two, investors want to hold it, earn a yield from it. Um, it only would make sense if, you know, XRP and all these different um, blockchains can be utilized within the SWIFT system. So they're just going to help bring all these blockchains together. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the idea, guys, too. You know, a lot of people are worried that there's going to be so many failures. There are going to be a lot of successes because these things all rep different, represent different stuff. You know, Bitcoin is is a store of value token. ETH, you know, represents this Web3, which is going to be huge in the future. And there's going to be so many companies under that umbrella. Um, you know, again, there's banking tokens. There's 
there's compliance tokens. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, we on here, I, Josh, we have a question. Somebody said, how do we buy XRP? Um, guys, I can do a class on that. I can kind of go through that. Um, I'm actually in the process. I do it about <laughs> monthly. So I'm actually in the process this evening and tomorrow buying more. Um, but there's, there's a few different ways you can do it at this time. Um, and then, like I said, you're going to need, I, I highly recommend that you have a ledger before you do this. Um, just in recent times with everything falling off, you know, I, I personally buy mine on KuCoin. Not that I don't trust KuCoin, but I don't keep it on KuCoin. I buy it, I do my transfers, and I get it off the exchange because it just, it's safer that way. Um, Josh, you use Uphold, I guess. Yeah, I haven't gotten any while. Another easy way I was told is that if you guys have um, uh, Exodus wallets, you can just convert anything into Stellar. I think it was, yeah, I think it was Stellar and you can just convert it over to XRP, I believe. Yeah, and the, the way you do it um, on, uh, what did I say? Uh, oh, on KuCoin, the there we go. Yeah, the way we do it on KuCoin is essentially buy uh, XLM, convert it and then turn it into XRP. Yeah, so it looks like buying XLM. Yeah, yeah so it, it's not overly confusing. There's oh, some good YouTube that. videos out there about it. So if, if you guys have questions about how to do that, um, fortunately, XLM, you, you can still buy on Coinbase, correct, right now? Um, I know yeah. you can buy it even if some of you guys, if I'll, I'll slap your wrist if you are, but even if you are uh, on Robinhood, you can buy XLM. I would highly recommend if you do have money on Robinhood, buy your tokens, uh, do what you're going to do, and then I would transfer them off of Robinhood as well. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. I don't like Robinhood. I don't like the way they operate and do business. Uh, I, therefore, I don't want them to hold my money. So um i'm going to keep saying this i'm sure josh will anybody you watching crypto right now ledger cold storage some kind of you know safety net for you because there is no fdic insurance in this space not yet that's what we're waiting for so you know protect your stuff as this market kind of shakes itself out i, I don't think it's over yeah i don't think so either guys um no. so someone asked um, or they're kind of commenting about Seoul. Personally, I think Seoul did some pretty nasty falling. And if it the market takes a big hit again, I think Seoul is going to cut in half again. So um, for me, I, I converted the rest of my Seoul to Bitcoin for now. Um, projects I do trust are Bitcoin, ETH, XRP, Matic, probably Cardano. Litecoin, seem, Litecoin actually has been moving up. Bro, it's been doing so good. Like yeah, as like compared to thirty eight percent in the last month. So, but it's just like trading, guys. Just watch some of these prices. If you see it, it's like, damn, that's below, yeah. like way below than what I checked last month, and the market really hasn't moved. Chances are, some of these coins can actually kind of move back up. Like they might be oversold, and then boom, they you know they go right back to like you know ten twenty percent up, and now you just gained a little bit on your dollar cost average. So if you guys like crypto, uh, FTX, that already happened, Paul. Good call. Yeah, so FTX already had, to, they already, they. that's why Seoul dumped the day FTX had to cover their position in their FTT tokens. They had to sell their soul, hmm. go figure, they had to sell their soul to cover their position on, FT, on their FTT tokens. Yeah. So they don't... Yeah, that was Anthony, I mean, he might be right, but technically FTX doesn't own anything. That's why they're bankrupt and they don't have anything. You know, they, they were supposed to have $9 billion in their balance sheet. The report says that they have like, I think it says they have 300 million. So, I mean, as much as dumping 300 million out of Seoul, you go to look at the market cap. Hey, I have a question for you, um, Josh. Can you still buy FTT right now on any exchange? I don't think you can. Okay. I was just wondering. If... Yeah. So if if that was the case, Paul, um, 
uh, let's see. I mean, if they had 13 billion or whatever, they would have 100% of the sold tokens. So that's not the case. They already had to dump their position. And at the time, Sol's price was like, it was like 13 billion. So they owned about 13%. So they allegedly had to dump about $1.3 billion worth of Sol. And then that caused like mass, mad chaos. The numbers just got to make sense. I mean, it, you read this stuff, go do the calculation. You know, that's, and that's part of the issue with the crypto spaces. So many people hear something and then they just, they don't do the math. They're like, oh my God, Seoul has to dump 300 million and they're at a $13 billion market cap. Like who cares? <laughs> but does anyone have anything else? Josh, go back up real quick um, to keep going down. Algorand, there we go. 31, number 31. Uh, Algorand is another ISO token, guys, just another project to look at and kind of, you know, um, I, I would go highly recommend you go look at what they do and what actual real world problem that they solve and what their, you know, what their solution is and how they operate. Um, it is a great, it is a great project. It's been around for, I'd have to go look, but, you know, it's been around and it's it's been a pretty solid project and it is also an ISO compliant uh, cryptocurrency. So again, the implementation of SWIFT, of the Fedwire services, of the Bank of Japan, you know, all these global banks and, and central banks, they're moving to this ISO uh, technology and Algo is, is you know, look, Algorand, the green blockchain. Um I also highly recommend anybody that hasn't read in its entirety, even though it's boring, go read the entirety of the Biden's crypto bill. Um, what was it? 14. I'll have to look up the number. Um, but there's a lot of language and a lot of these ISO compliant tokens. If you look at the project, they comply with the language of the bill being you know completely trustworthy um having full transparency uh being sustainable energy compliant you know all these things this this verbiage that's in that crypto bill uh you'll find a lot of it in the language of the projects that are iso tokens the algorands the xrp xlm xdc um and and i believe there's four more and in the future there will be more than that so uh, again, boring read, but go read the the crypto bill proposal and, and kind of what they're trying to do in creating a CBDC and re researching that. Um, check that out and then look at these ISO projects, you know, make an informed decision for yourself. But I, I think this stuff is, you know, really got, you know, some promising technology behind it. This guy's actually supposed to be, he was like a blockchain professor at MIT, but he's supposed to be, um, helping the Fed create like their own CBDC. And they're, yeah, actually the, uh, the, the government is doing that right now. We, you know, we're, I don't know if everybody's been talking about that, but we, we are looking into and kind of beta testing a, a CBDC as a, a federal government right now. Um, the rest of the world's doing it as we speak. And when that regulation comes in and the CBDs get kind of put onto the people, um, then we'll have the clarity and then crypto can do what it's designed to do. You got, um, you got any info on, um, Kronos from what I've read is I think they're having issues with money, right? Yeah, I had heard that, but you know, in line of recent events, it's so hard to like, you know, it, it's really hard to say what's real and what's not. There's so much hearsay, so much rumor. So I don't know. Um, I had heard that, I guess, right around the FTX thing, you know, Crow wasn't doing well, but. Yeah. Is it doing any worse guys. than, I mean, the entire market is not doing well. Is it, is it doing substantially worse than anything else or not really? Is it just um, kind of dealing with the market? That I don't know. I, I, I'm just more worried they're going to catch themselves in a loop. Like, uh, I mean, I don't become think they'll be like FTT, but if they gave out their crow token as any type of collateral yeah and that that whole you know exchange token thing um is interesting and and a little, a little scary um 
you know, that once we kind of saw how that happened with FDT and it, it could happen, but it, again, who knows? It might just be a fear thing. You know, it might be everybody's worried that could happen because they do have an exchange um, base token. Yeah. It just has Coinbase ever talk about this. did Coinbase ever talk about having a token themselves? No, I don't think so. That would be interesting, you know. B and B's got theirs and MetaMask was supposed to have one. Yeah. But they never dropped it. And again, it's like it's, it's one of those wallet. Yeah, up 80%. Wow. Yeah. I've actually checked a couple wallet tokens and they've been doing good and I'm not really piecing together what the speculation is there or, I mean, they say that the, if you own more of these token wallet coins is that you get um, a larger piece in the DAO as far as like when they're voting for updates sure. and changes when it comes to the the actual application, the wallet application. Right. So that could be something. But I don't have anything else. Do you? Yeah, man, not really. Sorry, I mean, it was my first call, guys. So if if the information maybe didn't get uh, across to you guys in the way I wanted it to, but you do still have questions, please reach out. Um, again, this is something I, you know I think is could be really one of the top projects, if not the top project moving forward, just because this space is not for us. <laughs> This this crypto space was designed to fix a banking problem, a, a global banking problem, and that, in my opinion, XRP, XLM, the ISO network tokens, they fix those problems, the liquidity problems, you know, with the technologies behind these tokens. I can get into that stuff. It's it's pretty incredible. Um, but again, if I didn't explain it, or you have questions and you want to know more. We're going to start giving you guys some information and again, real world documents, government documents, um, bank documents, stuff from companies that are working directly with this company, using their product daily and uh, how they operate. So you guys can make an informed decision on, you know, what this technology could mean for global business. So again, thank you guys for listening to me. I appreciate it. Um, Josh, thanks for letting me hop on. And, you know, again, we've been talking about this for a while. So I'm glad I could, you know, share some of this information with, with people. And hopefully there's some more questions and we can keep this going because I think this one will, will be something in the future and something that sticks around. Yep. You guys have any, nobody has any questions because we're done. All right. Well, as always, guys, thanks for hopping on. You guys got to hear Andy bless us with great knowledge. And uh, I appreciate you, man, for coming on. It's fresh yeah, to have someone else teach. Yeah. I <laughs> appreciate you, uh, you handing the reins over for the evening. Um, hopefully I, I shared some information that one made sense and then two can, you know, help people make informed decisions for themselves and in their financial future. So Yep, just, yeah, I guys, think what just we're hop on David's for. calls and, uh, you know, the people who are actively trading crypto and just watching crypto and uh, put together education and information. And then you got all the knowledge you need to make decisions on when to invest or um, when to wait and things like that. So, and um, hey, Josh, I actually, while we were talking on my phone, um, I'm going to send it over to you. I have the, 